redefine. I want to talk about success for a minute because success has been misunderstood. First of all, the greatest enemy of success is the fear of failure. Some people are afraid to pursue their success because they believe they might fail. And so they don't try to do something new. Secondly, success is the potential destiny of all created things. Every seed has a tree in it. And the potential success of that tree is in that seed. And that's the way you are. Whatever you were born to do and be is in you now. And the success of your life depends on you becoming all that is trapped inside of you. The third thing about success that's important is to define it. What is success? Here's a definition I thought works for me for the last 20 years or so. And that is success is the completion and the fulfillment of the original intent or purpose for your existence or why you were created. Success is the completion and the successful fulfillment of the purpose for your existence or why a thing was made. In other words, success is not making a lot of money. Success is not having a big house with a car by a lake. Success is not having a lot of friends and a lot of accolades and a lot of plaques on the wall. Success is really very, very simple. It's you discovering your purpose and then completing it before you die. In other words, success must be measured by why you were created. Success is therefore purpose fulfilled. Success for the next year is going to be you making another step toward fulfilling your purpose in life while you were born. Making another step. And I believe that's why God gave us years. So we could live our lives a year at a time. Success is not measured by what you've done compared to to what others have done. And this is very important because sometimes we compete with other people and because we do better than them, we think we are successful. Success is not outwitting or outclassing other people. You can always find somebody less than you so you think you are successful. Therefore, success should not be measured by what you've done compared to what others have done. Then how do you measure success? Here's how you measure it. Success is measured by what you've done compared to what you should and could have done. Let me say it again. Success is measured by what you've done compared to what you should and could have done. In other words, the only person who knows how successful you are is you and God. I remember one day when I came home from school as a junior high student, I got... I came first in my exam. I got the highest grade. And when I got home, I showed my grades to my mother. And my mother looked at the grade and she says, you came first in the class. You beat everybody else. I said, I sure did. I beat everybody else. I said, aren't you happy? I came first. And she looked at my grades and she said, I'm disappointed in you. I said, why? She said, you came first with 69. You ain't smart. The other's just dumber. In other words, I was measuring my success against other people. She says, she says you can do better than this. In other words, she was teaching me a lesson that success is not measured by how you compare with other people, but how you compare what you are capable of doing yourself. And that's what 2004 must be about. It must not be about you trying to beat other people to the punch. As a matter of fact, when you read the Bible, the Bible says the race in God's plan is not to the swift. You don't come first because you are ahead. The race is those who what? Endure to end. They finish what they started. That's success. Purpose, therefore, is the key to success. Finding your purpose and fulfilling it. Now, I want you to write some of these things down about purpose, and this is very important. Here's a statement I found that encouraged me for many years, and that is, what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. When you look back at the failures of this year, you know some things didn't go right. You know some things you didn't accomplish. Some of you failed in doing some things you really wanted to do. Your goals were not fulfilled. And some of my goals, personally, have not been fulfilled. And you can look back and be depressed. But looking behind you doesn't help you for the future. And looking ahead of you 
can really make you afraid because you look at the uncertainty of whether you will succeed. But I've come to tell you that what's important tonight is what's within you now. And God has placed in you everything you need to become all you were born to be. And you are carrying it right now. And therefore, the Word of God said it so well. It says, unto him who was able to do exceedingly, abundantly above, beyond all you can ever ask or think, according to the power that's working, not in heaven, but he's placed the power inside of you. And that means that whatever you were born to do and become is on the inside of you. Very important to understand that. Can I make this statement about purpose, therefore? Purpose is so powerful, and if you understand, it becomes personal. Number one, you were created with a purpose and for a purpose. Nobody here is a mistake. Not one person in this planet came here as an experiment. You were not born just to make a living and keep a job and pay bills and then die. You were not born just to, to, to retire and get some pension and then fade away and we put you in a plot somewhere. You were born because there's something God wanted done that required you. You exist because God wanted something to happen on earth that he gave you to do. As a matter of fact, Job 36 says this, and I love this verse, verse 5. It says, God is mighty, but does not despise men. He is mighty and firm in his purpose. That word despise means to ignore. God does not ignore 6.1 billion people on earth right now. Each one of them, God has a specific purpose for them, and he will not despise or ignore them. You were born to do something very critical. Here's my favorite verse in the Bible, Proverbs 1, Proverbs 19, verse 21. It says, many are the plans in your heart, but the Lord's purpose for you will prevail. Say amen. God says, you've got many plans for 2004. But before you make plans, consult me for my purpose, he says, because I got a purpose for your life in 2004. There's some things God wants done in you in 2004. And that's why you shouldn't just go about making plans without spending time with God. That's why you have to stop and begin the year in his presence like this. Because you ain't smart enough to figure out your future. And God knows your future long before you was created. And therefore, he wants you to know his purpose so your plans can be in keeping with his purpose. What a tragedy to be successful in the wrong thing. It's frightening to be perfectly successful in something God never told you to do. Therefore, the future of your life should be always tapping into God. What did he create me to be? And, and therefore, God says his purpose will prevail. What is purpose? Purpose is defined as the original reason for the existence of a thing. In other words, purpose is why a thing was made. Secondly, purpose is the reason why something was created. In other words, whatever you were born to do is why God created you. You were not born just to live a life and just die. You were born to accomplish something specifically. Matter of fact, success is making it to the end of your purpose. That is success. It's like, it's like a bird trapped in an egg. If that bird never flies, that bird is a failure. It never made it to flight. And that is what success is. Success is not just existing. Success is making it to the end of why you were born. Every banana tree, every mango tree, every apple tree is the end of the seed. And the seed is not successful until it makes it to the tree and has fruit on it. And that's what success is about. It's about fulfilling and completing your purpose in life. I want to talk about purpose and time for a minute. Write this down. Very important. This, this blew my mind some years ago. And that is time was created by God. He put you in it, but he doesn't live in it. What is time? We're talking about one year. Time is defined as an interruption in eternity. In other words, God who lives in forever took a little piece of forever and called it time. And then he put us in it. In other words, time has a beginning and an end and is trapped in forever. In other words, God lives in eternity. Eternity has no measure. It has no, no time in it. It is timeless. Matter of fact, eternity is time without measure. So God lives in eternity, but he created time, put us in it, and then he gave us time to be lived in days and weeks and months and years. And we're about to change another year, which is 52 weeks, which we have to account for in our lives tonight. We're about to enter another 52 weeks of our life. And we want to make sure that those 52 weeks are used for what God gave us birth for. Everything is, in, is time without measure in eternity. Now watch this. We were placed in time to fulfill purpose. There's a tremendous understanding of this in the Bible. Purpose gives meaning to life and time. If you don't know your purpose in life, 
your life and time will have no meaning. You'll simply be frustrated and wondering, why am I here? What am I going to do? Why do I hate this job? Why am I going to the same place all the time? And you begin to be frustrated, and your frustration is taken on other people because you don't have any meaning for your life. Whenever somebody commits suicide, they usually leave a note for someone. The note normally says, I had no reason for living. That is the saddest thing in the world. But there are some people who don't commit suicide instantly. They're committing suicide slowly, like taking drugs every day, like drinking alcohol every day. It's what I call slow suicide. They, they can't see something more important than smoking uh, cigarettes or drinking alcohol or taking cocaine or something. In other words, they haven't found something more important than the drug. They're committing suicide. The reason why I don't drink alcohol and I don't smoke is because I found something more important for my life that these things will interrupt with. And so I have to stop whatever stops me from fulfilling my dream. And therefore, when you have a purpose for your life, it disciplines your behavior and chooses your habits.